Hi everybody, today we're going to be doing another talk about a German grammar topic. We're talking about today the accusative prepositions, that is für, um, durch, ohne, and gegen. There are a couple of other ones, bis and entlang, but these are the only five that I will be covering in this particular video. So, if you haven't seen the German with the Puppets video, go ahead and click on that button up there at the top. In the meantime, let's go ahead and get started. First thing on here is the definition of them in English, which should help out with the usage just a little bit. First off, für is exactly what you think it is, it's for. Um means around, whenever you're talking about going around something. Uh, whenever you're talking about time, it actually means at. Durch means through, as in through the tunnel and so on. Ona means without. And gegen means against, unless of course you're talking about time, and then it means around. So um and gegen both are used with time. Um means at, and gegen means around. Whereas um, whenever you're talking about basically anything else other than time, it means around. And gegen, when talking about anything other than time, it means against. Once you get done with that, I thought I'd do a little review of the der words and the ein words. I put them all into one chart here. So we have der, die, das. D, den, D, das, D. There's your dare words for the nominative and accusative cases. Since this is about the accusative case, you can expect to see a lot more of the den, D, das, D category. Ein, eine, ein, and something with an E at the end of it for the plural. Don't forget that the reason that I have that K in there is because keine is kind of like uh, a way of getting around the idea that you can't have a books, but you can have keine Bursche, no books. So anyway, you can use these with possessives and those type of things. They are still indefinite articles. Einen, eine, ein, and keine. Those would be your indefinite articles for the accusative case. And again, you should expect to see einen more often in this video because we are talking about the accusative prepositions. Accusative case wouldn't be finished without having the pronouns talked about as well, so we have these in here. If you have ich in the accusative case, you have mich, changing from I to me. Du changes to dich. Er changes to ihn. Z stays the same and stays Z, as does S. Wir changes to uns, we to us in English. Ihr changes to euch. And the last two Zs stay the same as Z. Now let's get into trying to use these just a little bit. So we have in each one of these, we're supposed to fill in the blank with a preposition that would make sense, and then also the uh, thing in parentheses. All of the things in parentheses are, of course, in the nominative case, and you have to change them to the accusative case, being as they're used with accusative prepositions. Accusative prepositions are really, really easy. Whatever is after them is accusative. Doesn't really matter what that thing is. Nummer eins. Der Junge läuft blank blank. So we want to say the boy is walking around the table. Here we would say um for around, and then den Tisch for around the table. Der Junge läuft um den Tisch. The boy is walking around the table. Nummer zwei. Hast du ein Geschenk? Blank blank. Do you have a gift for your brother? So in this case we need für, meaning for, and then we follow it up with deinen Brüder for the accusative masculine deinen ending there, and then Brüder for your brother. Hast du ein Geschenk für deinen Bruder? Do you have a gift for your brother? Nummer 3. Warum hast du etwas? Blank blank. Ich bin doch nett. Why do you have something against me? I am nice. So we have here against, gegen, and then ich in the accusative case, mich. Warum hast du etwas gegen mich? Why do you have something against me? Ich bin doch nett. I'm nice. Nummer 4. Meine Freunde gehen heute Abend blank blank ins Kino. In this sentence, we want to say, my friends are going out to the movies without me this evening. Without me would be ohne mich. Rotkäppchen bringt den Kuchen blank blank. Here we have a couple of different options, but the one that I chose is durch. Little Red Riding Hood is bringing the cake through the forest. Durch den Wald. In section 5, we have to actually start to put together our own sentences here. So in this one, we have to worry about word order and conjugation and all of that stuff. First one on here has the question word wie viel at the beginning, so we have to start our sentence with that, followed by a singular noun, which in this case is Geld. So we want to say, how much money are you spending for the rock concert? Wie viel Geld gibst du für das Rockkonzert aus? Don't forget, aus goes at the end of the sentence in this one because we have the one of those separable prefixes. Nummer zwei. 
Here we want to start with our subject and then our conjugated verb. Our subject is ich, and we have to say bezahle to go with that. And then we say I spend a few euros for a book. Ich bezahle ein paar Euro für ein Buch. Nummer drei. Here we have the subject at the beginning again, which in this case is Peter. Then we have a conjugated form of fahren, which is fährt, which has an umlaut because of course it's an irregular verb in the RCS form. And then we have um den Bahnhof at the end because it's an accusative preposition. Peter fährt um den Bahnhof. Peter is driving around the train station. In Nummer 4, we have here a compound subject, Katja und ihre Freundin, Katja and her friend, and we conjugate our verb here, gehen, to go with that, which would be gehen, and then durch die Schule doesn't change because it's still accusative, but it's feminine, so it doesn't change from anything, it just stays die Schule. Katja und ihre Freundin gehen durch die Schule. Nummer 5. In this one we have a couple of different options. We could have die Freundin for the subject, or we could have mein Onkel for the subject. In this case, I actually chose to have my girlfriend as the subject instead. So we have here, meine Freundin hat kein Geschenk für meinen Onkel. Meinen Onkel because it's masculine accusative. It's accusative because of the preposition für. Nummer 6. Frau Riemann kommt ohne einen Mantel. Mrs. Riemann is coming without a coat. Nummer 7. Ich komme ohne das Buch. I am coming without the book. And Nummer 8. Here we have to have the subject again at the beginning, which could be either Z or wir. But depending on which one you choose, you may or may not have to change your pronoun. If you use Z as the subject, you need gegen uns. And if you use wir as the subject, you need gegen Z. So the sentences could be Z spielen gegen uns or wir spielen gegen Z. That's all I've got for today. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, go ahead and click on some of those buttons. In the meantime, I'm out of here. Bye now.